You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaprota film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome to the Never Daily Show, where if you didn't know it, we talk about everything under the sun, including effing politics. So if you're not ready for that, step off, mother truckers. I actually don't have any. I don't have any politics to talk. I don't about either. To talk I don't either. Like I, I just I spent the last two days slaying dragons. On that. Oh uh, yeah, you on the coke? No, I was on a muscle relaxer. Oh, okay. it was pretty rough. But that's nobody's ever said that in regards to being on muscle relaxers. I was very sleepy, but I it's actually supposed to be the odd. That's the uh, that's opposite of the purpose for them. We did a guestnicity last night and I was on a muscle relaxer. It was a lot of fun, but I can honestly say it was the only window in my day yesterday where I wasn't wanting to punch a tiny kitten. I had a I had a back problem and it was infuriating me. And uh I was just I was not in a good mood yesterday. We had a we had a serial spammer in the Patreon group where they went around to every uh episode except for TCK posting, "Where's TCK? Why isn't this one TCK? Where is why hasn't Kent put out another TCK?" Who was it? Some ass hat named Scott. And so I was like, Scott, watch this. Boop. Now, Scott may show up on your Patreon because he's no longer part of ours. Look, I don't. Let me just send this out there into the into the universe. If you like TCK or or whatever. If you like 911 calls or or fucking. Uh, whatever I- anything almost fiction you're not you're not helping that show by shitting on the other shows that that we like that doesn't that hurts that show that does the opposite of what you think it's doing meaning it doesn't hurt doesn't help your show by crapping on the other it doesn't help no yeah. no i uh <clears throat> yeah it's it's equivalent to like Say this. Say you, your 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 show is a little tugboat, right? And that little tugboat is setting on the deck of the Titanic. And some guys like I really like that tugboat, but fuck the Titanic. <laughs> and then he just starts going and shooting holes in the hole of the ship. It's like, well, yeah, but like that tugboat. Uh, we don't want to be in the water by ourselves. So if you could not do that, that would be. Well, to your point, crap all over the Titanic all you want and wish you were on a tugboat. But when the t- Titanic uh, decides to sink on you, don't blame the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's it's actually a message I think we need to, when we're on TCK, we need to send that message. Because anybody that's listening here, m- might not be of that same ilk, but there's a. Th- what do you think will be the iceberg for 1159 Media? The day where I take two muscle relaxers and get tired of the toxicity and I just turn it all off. And then you guys all become independent podcasters and I just go away and become a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> or you just um get a. Get a, uh, a a lumberjack shirt and you start chopping wood, um, in a cabin up up in the woods, waiting for us to come and get you to come back for one more we episode. Need you for one more episode. Now, hey up! It's been a while. I you just said something that's really funny. I saw a meme and now it's stuck in my head. Uh, it was that. It, it was like this ADHD thing where it was like every time I see somebody that I haven't seen in a while and they say, it's been a while. And then suddenly all I can hear is, it's been a while. Been a while. Since I 
Hold my head up. Hold my head up high. <laughs> it's so true. Oh, man. <laughs> I hate that I like stained. I like. Makes me mad at myself. I know they're like a, I know it's a dirty, for some reason, it's such a, like, just, I feel like a stained concert smells like Marlboro's. <laughs> but there's, but no one is smoking. It still smells like but Marlboro. But nobody smells. It's just all in all their clothes. <laughs> and their skin. <laughs> There's more leather skin at a Marlboro concert. <laughs> the only food you can buy is like the individual mini bags of Cheetos and Doritos and bug juice. Nothing is sold for cash or debit card. It's all off camel bucks. <laughs> what <laughs> but i do like stain. i do too i, I do too oh no i would go to that concert even knowing all that oh man oh well you know you know what um because i'm on the outside and i'm looking in there, there, there are just. I remember listening to that shit when I was like nineteen and being like, <clears throat> "This is so deep." There, there are some These really are good bands out there. You, you know who I don't think gets enough credit is, um, you don't have a Britney Spears or a Christina Aguilera or a or a Chris Ledoux in country music or. Or, uh, you know, pick any 90s, like, ultra pop. You don't have those bands without a producer who's cre literally creating the songs. They could literally... Yeah, that's especially true with boy bands. I was going to say, similar to our conversation about the Olympics, we, was that on, we weren't talking yet. We weren't recording yet. But, Kent, you made a point. You're like, I would watch the Olympics if... If it wasn't actual athletes, we just cherry picked people out of crowd. That's the power and capability producers have. They could literally build a band out of the ether. Yeah, they did it with uh, NC. Yeah, they're like, we need a, and we just you. the The trick is, I think, is to finding the right boys for a boy band in the 90s, the late 90s, just as eyes are getting big, but it's going to get way worse, um, is you have to have a really, really good pedophile for the scout. <laughs> He's got to have his grooming game on fleek. Grooming game on fleek. Also, taste for little boys <laughs> on fleek. Because he has to be able to think like a 12-year-old girl. It's it's true. It's true. Uh, here, here it, there, are a, I'll, there are more bands and artists than we probably want to know who don't write their own music in history. Um, yeah, their whole persona is boxed. Yeah. It 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 comes fabricated everything about them and and I don't know I I'm I'm a lot of people hear that and they might be critical right off the front but if I'm an amazing singer and that's all I am that's all I need to be you know like I I don't need to be all the yeah. things what does bother me like though, that guy that sang Richmond North of Richmond that's a good example I think of somebody that is just raw talent yeah. right. Yeah, did he work in the coal mines? I I don't know. He looks like it, and he lives in an area where it seemed like that might be possible. What's his name? Oliver Oliver Twist. Uh, Oliver Anthony. Oliver Anthony. Yeah, he was kind of the hawk tool girl of uh, music there for a minute, and I think he's yeah. still doing okay. Like, but he kind of popped up, and I haven't seen anything from him since. Uh, but did you know that Whitney Houston, uh, Celine Dion, they don't write their own stuff? That's not surprising to me at right. all. Um, do you know this? Here's what's wild. I, I might have said this before. If you listen to Rihanna, if you listen to Rihanna, 
you're like, oh, this is Rihanna. You can identify Rihanna in a heartbeat. If you listen to Sia, you're like, oh man, she sounds like Rihanna. But then you come to find out that Sia writes a lot of Rihanna's songs. (laughs) And you're like, oh, Rihanna sounds like Sia. (laughs) I was such a huge Sia fan for a long time. And then it came out that she was like weirdly obsessed with that little dance girl. Wasn't it a boy? Um, A little boy, wasn't it? It was a little girl, that that little girl from Dance Moms. Um, But I think she was like getting all Michael Jackson-y with that girl. And then that ruined Sia for me, which bummed me out because Sia has a lot of songs that I really fucking love. Yeah. Um, Elastic Heart, Chandelier. Chandelier. What up? And then she had to go and do that. Here's, like, here's, can we just send a memo to Hollywood and the music industry and be like, look, we understand you guys are individuals, blah, 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 blah. We got to please stop messing with children. Please. It really hurts your body of work. Yeah. The pedophile angle never, never goes well. Uh, how, I, however, I wish the rest of the world would apply the same logic that we have for music and musicians to the rest of the world, especially politics and government. It would be great if, because think about this. When was the last time, when was the last time you were like, what, what? Nikki Six is a total womanizer? I'm never listening to Nikki Six again. Yeah, we expect that from Nikki Six. Yeah. From fucking Motley Crue <laughs> or any If of them. I found out he was like devoutly married and didn't do drugs to the point of overdosing almost every night, I would be like, I don't think I want to listen to his music. <laughs> right? It's the opposite. It's the opposite. But but we seem to have this like piety about about other other but like I can't think of the last time I lis- I listened to even here's here's to the level like I can you do you do you remember like listening to music and you're like oh man I love this song and then it comes out that the artist is gay and it kind of repaints the lyrics to a lot of the songs like George Michael right like I didn't even know George Michael was gay I think he is what well he's dead. Um, George Michael is dead. <laughs> he died like a long time ago. I'm about to get sad on air <laughs> over the death of George, <laughs> who fucking yeah. died. In, who died eight years ago? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> and he came out as gay in 1998. Um, he died of natural causes. That's, that doesn't see that doesn't feel right that he would die of natural causes, you know. Um, well, that's bummed me out. <laughs> I'm so sorry to burst your bubble on that. One. <laughs> but like the, the the fact that someone chooses a different lifestyle and and writes stories and songs about it and everything it doesn't change my appreciation for the music it's not like oh this song's about a gay dude so forget it you know like it, no it, i still love that uh, all of the uh sam smith yeah which I, to to be fair um i i kind of suspected sam smith was gay right out of the gate but yeah. um what was that he had that one song that was so goddamn good Stay, Stay with, with me. me. Brilliant. Beautiful. Oh my god. Yeah. What a song that is. Elton John, imagine the world without Elton John songs. Like it's just it's I I love the fact that we're non-denominational about our opinion on on music and art, but it does not trans transfer to uh, I don't like the fact that it doesn't transfer. Uh we were talking about your your normal Joe Olympics, and I thought I, I have another Olympics that I would I would love to see, and I I actually think that there might be some of this on the horizon with individual sports. 
But can you imagine a completely roided out Olympics? I would watch. I don't know. I would probably tell you guys I can't record for the week because I would just be watching the roid Olympics. Double down on that. Get random people (laughs) and then roid them out. (laughs) Adderall and roids and just let them go. See, everything has to pick the guy that that delivers the wood to Lowe's. Get him on a roid sock. Get him on a fucking windstraw cycle. <laughs> and say, you've got one month to prepare for the Olympics. You're a swimmer. Your your competition is Jenny, a preschool teacher from Paducah, who's on the same. Who's on test 250. <laughs> they don't. Oh, here. I got it. Oh, this is even better. <clears throat> we get the whole pool. We get the whole Olympics pool. Every country gets 180 people. They all get on the same battery of medicine, but none of them know what event they're going to be doing until they walk into the arena. <laughs> they have to train for all of them. <laughs> they have a choice. The bo- There's two boxes on the application sheet. Do you agree to train for all of the events or do you agree to train for none <laughs> Suddenly, the guy that stocks the groceries at Piggly Wiggly and is 400 pounds overweight is competing in synchronized swimming. (laughs) Total unfair advantage. One month into a roid cycle. (laughs) I would watch. I would watch the fuck out of that. I know it would make so much money. Cities would be clamoring to be the host of that. Oh man. But I do actually think it's coming in some, in some sporting league. I think they're creating sporting leagues. Chase might be more up on this than I am, but I think football has, there's a football league that's coming. I think there's a fight, a fighting league. That's coming as well. Oh, I would watch. I would. Crowd. I would try to skew. If I was a talent scout for the for the Olympics, I would admittedly try to skew the results. To be honest, though, like for the shooting air section, I would try to find um, <laughs> white high school age males. <laughs> I was reading an article. I think maybe I said something about it. There's like an enhanced games that's supposed to be coming in 2025. Okay. It's basically the Olympics on steroids. Oh, I'm there. They're they're allowed to use performance enhancing drugs. Um, I think Theo interviewed the doctor. Oh, really? Okay. I think so. Oh, I would watch. I have to look at that, but yeah. Supposedly. It kind of reminds me of Monty Python used to do skits all the time. There was one that they had where it was it was it was the Olympics, but it was blind people running the hundred meter. <laughs> and the gun goes off and they all just scatter. <laughs> it was so good. One of them gets into the stands like a bull at Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Three kill children are killed. <laughs> the thing is, like, oh, it's sad because, like, we just talked about so many awesome things that we really would enjoy, but the actual Olympics is such a downer. Oh, man. Anyway, there would be also a fun Olympics to do all of the things that we said, and then also have a separate Olympics where you do all these things, and then also. Get them on like acid, <laughs> and you hire people in like dinosaur costumes to just run around, <laughs> and they don't know if it's the acid or, and have them try to have untalented people competing in Olympic events on steroids while tripping. I'd watch it. I'd watch the crap out of it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That would be way better than seeing people that know what they're doing. It feels very Roman Coliseum. Like, it feels like 
like an end of days type of shift where we're like, no, I just want to see people. I want to see people bleed out on the stage. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Ray Gunn try to do gym uh, break dancing. Just give me somebody bleeding out. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if you've ever looked into this story, but Luther actually just brought it up in the back door. And I coincidentally enough was looking into this just, just a few days ago. It's really happened. Holy <laughs> crap. There was a baseball player named Doc Ellis that pitch, pitched a no hitter on June 12th, 1970 while playing for the Pittsburgh pirates um, on acid. The whole game. What? Dude was a madman. Now. He was the motley crew of the MLB. I was going to say, like, acid doesn't seem to be the drug of the drug that I would choose if I had to hit a target. But that's, that's amazing. Oh. Um, I, circling back to the, uh. I, I I guess what I mean by like artists that don't write their own stuff and stuff is I don't care. Like I don't care. I only care if you think if you try to port, port, portray that you are writing it or that you do it. You know, like I yeah. lose I lose respect for you if if that's the case. Yeah. What up, Ashley Flowers? <laughs> you know, though. Okay. And and I. I've tried to make it pretty clear on like the 911 calls podcast that my level of research is totally on a different level than like yours on TCK, you know. Well, they're two different they shows. They are. It, yeah, and it's it's a different uh uh when I created 911, I intentionally told anybody that cared when I was creating it like I was like they're like what are you doing? I'm like I'm creating the show and they're like well what's the niche? And I'm like I want it to be fast food for podcast listeners. I don't, you know, that, that was my intention at the very beginning, but <clears throat> anyway, oh man. Speaking of fast food, yeah. we recently got to Chick-fil-A. Oh, you did? You got one? And in, in my town. Yeah. yeah. We got a Chick-fil-A and I had never had Chick-fil-A. Okay. And I ate Chick-fil-A and before I say the rest of this, let me, it was fine. It was perfectly fine. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it didn't blow my hair off. Um, I didn't want to go to church on Sunday after I (laughs) ate it. It, it, I didn't hate gays after eating one chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. It was fine, but I don't get the Chick-fil-A hoo-ha. I don't, it was, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's would I eat there again? Yeah, sure. If I was hungry, would I go out of my way to get Chick Fil A? Absolutely not. I agree. Absolutely. In and not. out, Chipotle. They come with a culture that I don't think, you know, that it, it, it it's almost the legendary, the legend of these restaurants, right? I mean, some people live or die by Chipotle. My wife, particularly, she went to In and Out. We got an In and Out not too long. I'm ago. with your wife on that. <clears throat> On the Chipotle train, that you that you you're a ride or die kind of Chipotle. I'm a ride or die Chipotle. Yeah. Panera is another one I think that has a culture around it. It's like you know I almost feel like Panera should be built next to a Starbucks. Like that's the kind of culture I feel like. With Panera, I don't really think it's the food as much as it's the Wi-Fi. Is it really good? <laughs> <laughs> it must be. It's full of a bunch of. Uh, what are known as entrepreneurs. Most feminist novels have been written in Panera Bread. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, uh, unbeknownst to the audience in the background, in the back door, in the back door or listening to the show, we're actually, we're kind of stacked up today. We're doing doubling down on recording episodes today. So we have a lot to do. Let me tell you what I hate. About Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut you off on your Chick-fil-A story. I apologize. You're fine. So the food itself, like I said, it's fine. It's fine. I I, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it no more, no less than I would Wendy's or McDonald's or Hardee's or any other fast food chains. But my, my, my gripe 
about Chick Fil A is the goddamn drive through is like trying to go through LAX. It's a uh, circuitous. I don't want to fucking. I don't need to follow signs for arrivals and departures. <laughs> it's and fucking. What plane is your chicken sandwich on? I like what was wrong with the regular drive through. I feel like it was simple. We all understand the zipper effect. Yeah. Of the drive through, but at Chick fil A, you've got 92 lanes. There's people running across with luggage. <laughs> it's really confusing. And then you pull up, and they don't even have a window. There's just a guy standing at a door, like you're buying, like you, like a bootlegger, <laughs> just running out the back door with your. It all feels very, very illegal. Yeah. The zipper, the, it, and I don't know if this happened to you, but when you go through the drive through, they say, they'll tell you at the very end, they'll say, okay, and you are going to be following the red Sentra. And so th- there's a sense of order to it. But without that person telling you that, I feel like it'd be mayhem. Oh, yes. I, I'll tell you what. I actually know why they, they do it that way, though, as far as the controlled zippering. I don't know if this happens at your chick uh, your Chick Fil A, but you go around the corner in the drive through, and suddenly there's a guy who just knows your re- it's your receipt, and so they've got an individual receipt guy. He's like, "Here's your receipt," and it's never wrong. He never got gives you the wrong one. So I think there is something about the traffic management, but the multiple lanes that 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 it's genius. And you know what? fucking pisses me off and my wife is bad for this what i don't if i'm at a drive through and i'm there to purchase food there is no reason to bring my phone into this <laughs> no i am not using the goddamn app <laughs> every restaurant now huh will you be using the app today i have money here I'm speaking into the little box. I'm telling you what I want. I exchange this money for your goods. And I fucking leave. At no point should I have to take my phone out in this transaction. I I agree with you. I, 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 I haven't done it yet, so maybe I'm missing something. But. Why would I be using the app if I'm at the drive-through? Like, what am I supposed to talk to you about? Like, if I say yes, do they say okay? Oh, do they say like okay? What's the order number? Because it'd have an order. So I would have had to have pre-ordered through the app, and then you drive. Okay, I just answered my own. Or, or my lot. My wife loves <clears throat> it. She's like, she's like, you care to pick up the girls some Happy Meals? I'm like, sure. She's like, I'll order it on the app. Text me when you get there. No! <laughs> Jess, what were you going to say? I'll order it when I get there. Jess was talking in in hyper mime. Jess, what? What? I was just saying that you can, if you don't order it through the app, you could even like scan your phone in some cases and you get points for being oh, there and you'll get free stuff. Oh. Like you get a free sandwich or like if it's your birthday, you might get a free meal or like a shake. Okay. And so- like okay, Starbucks. I'm really getting goddamn dragged in the comment <laughs> section right the now. The back door is on not fire. not wanting to bring my phone <laughs> into the process of buying a chunk of dead cow. <laughs> Adam, I guess the world's moved on without us, kids. There's no cow at Chick-fil-A, but it's fine. Um. <laughs> They're the sponsors. I'm just an angry old man <laughs> that's yelling at the kids to stay off his lawn. I get it. <laughs> it's free. You get free stuff. Yeah, I, I can see the. Uh, I can see the advantage uh, now. Now that I think about it, actually, the app could solve some problems for me because there's nothing that makes me more angry, is when you bring a group of people, to the drive-through, and you're like, okay, what do you want? And they're like, oh, oh, uh. And they haven't looked. They haven't thought about it at all. They've heard three other yeah. people order. It, my daughters are notorious for this. Also, as if the McDonald's menu has changed in the past <laughs> 250 exactly. years. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's rough. I will say the one thing that I really like, and I don't know how they do it. I really like about Chick-fil-A is they somehow... 
in their application process, they must be able to determine if the child who is going to be working there, the teen, can actually put two two words together and make eye contact. Because, yeah. and I don't I don't know if that's the case. Like uh, when you get a Chick Fil A outside of Utah, where you know, I, I, I guess that's the thing is every. Every kid that works at a Chick-fil-A around here seems like they're a Mormon because they're like, hi, hey, how can I help you today? Would you like cheese on that? Okay. All right. Now you're going to be following the bus full of Mennonites right there. And then you'll get receipt around the corner and then somebody's going to hand you your food. Okay. All right. You have a great day. Okay. You too. Oh, you, you know, and I don't know if that translates to every state, but. Uh, Chris Henry, by the way, brought up something in the back door that I need to address that's going to fucking really rustle some jimmies, but I agree with him, and that is that Five Guys French Fries are also overrated. They are soggy, they are limp, and they are flavorless. Fuck Five (laughs) Guys French Fries. Okay? Now, I'll get behind you on the Five Guys Burgers. Mm, Yeah. Got it. They are pretty good. But the French fries are trash. Can we all be honest with ourselves and admit yeah, that? Yeah, the Five Guys fries are like you let the fries enjoy a sauna before they went in the bag. Yes. It's just, and I don't know about you, but reaching in to get fries out of the bag is the same. Oh, it feels so <clears throat> dirty. It, you know what it feels like, Kent? I know you'll relate with this. It feels like being on the dock of a lake during humid summer in a southern state reaching in to grab another night crawler. It's the same. It does. It's the same. It does. It's like they cooked them in a tea Yeah. Cup. You feel the heat even before you get to the, like you feel the sog in the air even before yeah. you get there. Uh, we're changing the world right now. We're changing the world from the Olympics to fries. I think my favorite fries are steak and shake. Kind of thin. The, those are little thin straw fries. Yeah. They're always crispy yeah. and salty. Delicious. Fuck yeah. So Freddy's has those. Yeah. Freddy's has the little tiny fries. I will say my big meat hand, my meat paws struggle to like get a dainty portion that that normal. I look around, I'm like, oh, people are eating fries normally. And then my hand goes, but you can't. And it's like, I have 32 fries and they don't fit in the ketchup yeah. thing. And then putting yeah. it in my mouth. I eat French fries like I eat popcorn. Yeah, yeah half of them end up in my lap. <laughs> uh, um, hey, there's also something crazy about French fries for anybody that's a that's a father or a mother. They know this. French fries never, never, ever deteriorate. No, I found French fries under my daughter's car seat from nineteen. 19- 73, <laughs> and they look exactly like we bought them yesterday. Ooh, have you seen this video? There's a video. This is crazy. There's a lady who buys a whole box. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Op. We don't, we, we, let's not, we don't need to brush over this. I think there's something important to be um, pulled from this. Take a potato. Yeah. Just a potato. Uh-huh. Set it in your windowsill. It turns into my grandma's face. Give it a week. Yeah. (laughs) Shouldn't do that. Potatoes age like Asians. (laughs) It's true. It's true. Okay. And they, they go bad fast and they get really, really bad fast. So I feel like. It makes sense that that should translate over to French fries, considering French fries are just a potato. I think that tells you a lot about the preservatives and all the other bullshit that yeah. goes in there that it never disintegrates. Here's, I can, I can, I can even improve upon your perspective here and give you a little bit more. <clears throat> so I used to do marketing uh, for uh, for uh, Simplot. Which the, Simplot is the company that grows the potatoes for McDonald's fries and a lot of other places too. But they they're the potato people, and so I used to do marketing for them on the ag side. 
So not even on the food side, I was doing it on the ag side and they are genetically modifying potatoes so that they won't wilt or bruise. Also apples that don't brown when you cut them. And I remember one time they had me do an ad. They're like, we need to do an ad for less bruising for the potatoes. And I, it, I did not show it to, to the, the, the person that was you know, needing the ad, but I showed the designers next to me. I, I did a picture of a woman with a black eye. <laughs> and it didn't go, didn't go over well. But why was she with a black guy? <laughs> you know, it's like riding a horse. More bruising, longer time you're in the saddle. Um, but but it's it goes be it goes it it it, it pre predates even the produ the 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 preservatives that they would use. the The actual fruits and vegetables themselves are now modified so that they're more resilient but f frighteningly so like we have bendy bananas now and watermelon that's like foam apples that don't brown i just want a fucking avocado that i can eat when i want yeah we're not going to get there I, I don't know i don't know if you eat a lot of avocados i eat a lot of avocados there's actually not a lot of people know this there is a 19 second window for when you can actually eat an avocado. <laughs> it's true. As the you bring it home for two days, it's too hard to eat. And then on Tuesday, <laughs> between 1.13 a.m. and 3.07 a.m., it is ripe and it's ready to eat. But if you get up on Wednesday morning and cut into it, it's just a mushy brown inside. <laughs> They're the axolotl of the vegetable world. They are. They really are. But, <clears throat> yeah. Oof. Um. What did you bring today? Today, up. Uh, uh, so I I got a little bit, not really, but a little bit back into gaming this past week. Okay. I hadn't played a video game in a very long time. And uh, what started it? One of my facebook friends april smith shout out april i've known her for many years she actually used to send me care packages um while i was on deployments but and we met through facebook and april's a big gamer and she got me into playing this game called subnautica i'm a big survival um video game fan like one of my favorite games of all time is called stranded d uh -huh. which is basically just the movie castaway in game form it's so good it's so good, and and I I don't like playing a lot of like multiplayer games online where you're competing with people, and sh I like to be by myself and zone out. And stranded deep, you're alone. You're literally the only person in the world in in this because you're stranded on an island. Okay, so you're just trying to survive. And April knew that I like those kind of games, so she suggested a game called Subnautica which she was playing and I played it and I fucking hated Subnautica. Oh. And, but it did get me back into trying to find another Subnautica. Okay. So people in the background now are talking about Subnautica. They like Subnautica. I'll tell you why I don't like Subnautica. It's tedious and boring. And the inventory system is trash. Um, most of Subnautica is trying to go back and forth to, to your little base thing to get things. And then having to go all the way back to what you're doing. And then, like, that's 90% of the game. So, fuck that game. I think that the idea they had was great. Could have been a really amazing game. I just wasn't a fan in general. But I did, through this, discover a game called The Forest. <gasps> oh, I was just going to say. I was going to bring it up. And uh, have you seen Sons of the Forest? I have. Okay. I haven't tried it yeah. yet, but I've been playing The Forest. Yay! Oh, I'm so glad that you found it because this is what I was going to one up whatever you were playing with the forest, but you're there already. It was, it is great. I love the forest and the plot. Pretty simple. You're in a, <coughs> sorry, I, I'm getting over a uh, sinus infection. You're in a uh, plane crash. You crash in this forest. You're the only survivor, but 
you have crashed amongst. I haven't got to the end yet, so I don't know the plot. I don't know what these things are, but it's very silent hillish without the fog and in a forest. Yeah. And um and you just gotta survive. You gotta build a base and 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 I love it. Isn't that wild. If you uh it, and I know th- Oh, you're gonna love Sons of and the And I know forest. Son of the Forest is a thing. Yeah. I haven't got to play it yet, but I'm excited about that as well. And I imagine that, uh, and I haven't got to the end of the forest yet, but I would imagine that in Son of the Forest, you are playing the son of the character from the first game. Yeah, you're playing the sons, actually. Yes, but yes. Oh, okay. Um, the the I I often in my heart think, man, if son if the four if the game developers behind it um end night if end night could just somehow get a hold of the red dead redemption to landscapes the forest would be on another plant i no one would stop playing no one would no one could stop playing it i mean i already can't but i'm really glad that you've played it because i thought this game was relatively unheard of but I guess it's got a big cult following. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. I don't know why Stranded Deep doesn't have that cult following as much as I love the forest. I personally still think Stranded Deep is better. But whatever. There are there whatever. There are there are some um I'm I really like the visceral, like the visceral survival, the outdoor. I, I like Resident Evil Village for that reason. I like the dark, kind of creepy. I don't like. I like that too. Yeah, I don't like jump scare as much as I just like the the environment. Uh, it's the same reason why I love the Blair Witch Project or Wit or yeah. Witch. I just love that dark fourteen. Like, I would have felt very much at home in like the fourteen hundreds, living in a you know, some dank village somewhere. Like, I, I love that feeling. I love Peter Bruegel paintings. I don't know. I'm kind of weird, but. A lot of people say that, that they love Peter Bruegel paintings. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard, there's two games that that kind of give you the same feeling uh, as, as they're, they're, they're different. They're, I mean, they're not survival. Well, like, I don't know. Death Stranding. Have you heard of Death Stranding? I don't get. To, I don't play a lot of games. Not as much as I want to. Uh, Death, St- anyway. Death Stranding's main character is. Oh gosh, it just left my mind. From The Walking Dead. Um, can't remember. One of the guys from the the, the main guy, uh, Norman Reedus. Nor, thank you, Morris. Meat popsicle in the back door. Can't save me. <laughs> Norman Reedus. So Daryl Dixon. Yeah. And then there's another game called Days Gone, which is also kind of outdoor, uh, uh, end of end of days, kind of apocalyptic, kind of. Uh, I think I remember when they were making that. Is that the one where they were like just you're just like killing hordes? There's like hundreds and hundreds of them. There of the zombies coming and I, I, they follow you and and they run. It's in my wish. No, I bought it. I haven't played it yet, but the videos for it. Let me. I'll let me see here. I hate that when I'm on Steam, I have to put in my birth date every time to see a page. What I like about Stranded Deep is it's just beautiful. Yeah. And there's something about the visuals cuz you're stuck. What's really cool about Stranded Deep is you're in the beginning of the game, like a, you're also in a plane crash. It's it's literally cast away the game. Okay. You're in a plane crash. You're alone on this island. You have to build a raft, which takes some time. But here's what's awesome about the game. Then you have to navigate the ocean and find other islands to get materials. Oh, really? And you can be stuck out in the ocean forever trying to find a place. And then you come across an island. And because they're randomly generated... There's always different, the islands are different. Wild. And they have different resources and animals to kill. It's amazing. That's cool. And on top of that, you've got this gorgeous game. You've always, the the water looks, it's really beautiful. You've got the coconut trees and you're just trying to survive. But even if you die, it's not that sad because it's like, I mean, if you gotta die. It's a pretty place. I think. 
that's a beautiful place to die. Yeah. And if you get good enough and you evolve and you can create weapons and then you can start killing sharks, you could fucking eat sharks. <laughs> Which game would you would you say so so uh um the forest what what makes that different than stranded deep as far as like so the forest you have a set antagonist you know yeah. who the bad guys are. Oh, okay. Are. I see. And there is not that in Stranded Deep. There is not that in Stranded The bad guys in Stranded Deep are just nature. Okay. Nature's trying to kill you. I see. Okay. Not trying to get mauled by a boar or eaten by a shark or dying of exposure or starvation or hunger. There's not like a bad guy in Stranded Deep. <clears throat> I see. So technically, if you wanted to play it safe and just stay on the island and try to just eat and survive, you could do that if you wanted to be boring and play that way. That's cool. There is a, I am real, I, I rarely get really excited, like countdown to the days kind of thing for a game. There's one coming out though that I'm really excited about. It's called The Altars. And what it is, is you keep, you keep, you round one, you're you. Then round two, there's an alternate you, but you're still there too. And so it keeps reproducing yourself, but every version of you, you hang out with each other. Like you have to survive with each other. You've got to accomplish missions together. But each one of you is nuanced. Like one of you might be like a biker, you know, a grizzled old biker. And another is like a software engineer. And the game evolves by you having to interact. Um, here, the description. Explore an emotional sci-fi game that features a unique blend of adventure survival. Play as Jan Dolsky, a simple worker who creates alternate versions of himself in a desperate attempt to escape from a planet where even sun rays can prove deadly. So you're trying to create other versions of yourself to help your mission further along? It's wild. It's real. I'm looking at it right now. This looks like right up my alley. Ugh, it's, yeah. Can you only play it on Steam? I don't think. Oh, let's see. It's hot. I don't do Steam. Yeah, no. Because fuck Steam. My my credit card got stolen on Steam. It looks like. No, it, it, some fella in Zimbabwe really enjoyed himself <laughs> one day. Uh, I, I he really treated. Himself. I'm not quite sure. I would assume that they they are smart and they'll put it on the platforms as well. Um, there's a there's a. I was actually going to mention this game to Jess because I thought. Like Jess, I don't think Jess is a big gamer anymore, but there's this one game you can, you can look it up on steam called tiny glade. And you literally are just like dragging the cursor around like a grass, grassy hill, but you're building castles and like environments. And it's so nuts though. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's like AI, is in your in the tip of your finger and you you tell it oh i want a brick wall right here and it's like blah, blah, blah. and then you you just drag around and it like creates or shrinks the wall and but it's all so beautiful so beautiful tiny glade it's coming out september 23rd and just the video of it it'll like mess with your head you're like wow that is wild how they how they made this game I don't really know the purpose other than just building stuff. It feels kind of Sims like, but like a Minecraft ish. Yeah, but like, but like, um, it, it, if Minecraft were designed by Studio Ghibli, like the Japanimation guys, it's like ridiculously beautiful. Uh, it's like very painterly, kind of, I don't know, hard to describe, but it's beautiful. I think it would be funny to do a parody of Minecraft called Minecraft, but it's spelled E M E I N. <laughs> and you're trying to rebuild Poland. Is it post? It's post World War II. <laughs> and it's. 
Some people are still reluctant to help you with the rebuild. <laughs> and in Minecraft, you don't only rebuild the area and and geog or and geography around you, but also the perfect race. <laughs> Geo and bioengineering. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's fun. Did, uh, are we into what you brought? I don't, I forgot. Yeah, that was it. What'd you bring up? (laughs) No, uh, I got to wondering, like, what are the weirdest games ever made? Oh, okay. Like, cause there's some weird, strange games out there. Uh, one of my personal favorites, a game called I Am Bread. Oh, yeah. Which I've talked about. The only goal of the game is to get a get from one spot in a kitchen to the other into the toaster without getting germs all over yourself. I use I Am Bread cut scenes. Uh, like you and I are recording right now, but every once in a while our video studio blacks out one of us. And so you'll be talking, but our, we have no source video for you. And so, uh, Sam 2.0 does the editing for the show. Uh, if you've seen a reel or a short of, uh, of nine one one or any of our shows on TikTok or, or Instagram, you're either seeing the work of Sam 2.0 or of, uh, Sammy and Brandon. Um, but anyway, but, uh, when the video blacks out, we just shift to gameplay of I Am Bread. <laughs> it's fun. I can watch that, even without the audio. Yeah, it's fun. It's a hard game. It is. It's very it hard, because the we'll controls use go- aren't traditional. No. We use Goat Simulator, too. We'll use gameplay from Goat Simulator as well. But Anyway, I digress. Sorry. So I wanted to know, like, what are some weird games? And I found a list on a website called Cultured Vultures of the top 10 weirdest games ever made. And uh, the first one is called Catherine, but it doesn't, I mean, it does look weird, but it's not that weird. But the first one I'm going to cover here is called Cruelty Squad, which was released by Consumer Soft Products. For the PC. And in Cruelty Squad, what were you going to say? I'm just, I, 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 this is the dumbest consumer soft products. Yeah. Okay, I've got it pulled up on Steam. Cruelty Squad is apparently a first person shooter. And if you're not a gamer, that's okay. I'll tell you what a first person shooter is. Think Call of Duty. I know you're not a gamer, but I'm sure you've seen what Call of Duty looks like. It's a uh, shooter where you're holding the gun and it's first person view. So you're looking through the eyes of the the character in the game. And then there's third person games like Gears of War and Red Dead Redemption, where you're looking over the shoulder of the character. So Cruelty Squad is apparently a first person shooter. Uh, it says Consumer Soft Products Abstract Chaos combines immersive sim elements from games like Deuce X and Hitman, except this time it feels like a fever dream sprinkled with LSD. It is so ugly looking. This is amazing. <laughs> it says Call of Duty wishes it could look half this interesting. <laughs> uh. Aside from its grotesque aesthetics, The game has even more oddities. It says, yes, Cruelty Squad is like Hitman since you're tasked to assassinate a target at each level, and you also possess several levels of drip. However, this game has filthy mechanics like harvesting a dead enemy's organs after they explode everywhere. Eventually, you can sell those harvested body parts in the stock market for money, black market style. <laughs> I was just watching the video of the gameplay. She, they fish. They cast a lame pole like this. It's just like a stick, right? It's like ur, ur. it casts out into the Minecraft water. They catch a fish and bring the fish to them, like just with the one arm movement, ur, ur. and then it goes glory and terror. <laughs> it's like what is happening? Okay, I've got to see some of this. Game. Oh, the gameplay is horrible. But it was also when did this come 2021 out? 
That's the weirdest. 2021? Yeah. Oh, it does look terrible. It is rough. Wow. But I, I, oh, it's, uh, it, it's so weird too. Like it's, it, the whole thing, it, the fever dream is a very good word for it. It reminds me a little like if, um, Phil Tippett recreated Minecraft. <laughs> He he created Oh Raven worked at GameStop for five years. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Fucked over so many 14 year olds <laughs> trying to trade in their, their Xbox games. <laughs> I love you, Raven. Uh, I just fucking know you looked at some little poor kid right in his eyes. He had his he had a thousand five hundred dollars worth of merchandise there, and you went I can do $25 in store credit. <laughs> That's how they make their money. Oh, it's funny. Uh. <laughs> we, I'll tell you what, last offer, we can give you $10 in store credit and then take you in the back and all the male employees can jerk off on your back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best we can do. Jeez. Look, it's going to sit on the shelf. We don't know how long it's going to be in the way. Um, I, I understand it's a $150 game. I understand, but we're only going to get 50 out of it. It's going to be on the shelf for over three days. It's just not worth what you think it is. I wonder, too. Raven doing that Rick from Pawn Stars thing. I wonder, too, like, we all know that, like, you know, PS when the PS5 came out, the the Walmart workers were bu were buying the inventory before it even hit the shelf. You know, makes you what makes yeah. you wonder about GameStop, like how often it's like, bro, somebody brought this in. I got it. I got it. You know, it never even hits the shelf because they're hoarding the the goods. Yeah. Cruelty. Next squad, game we're though. gonna cover is Demolition Girl. Hey, I'm on it. Let me see. Made by Tamsoft. And it came out for the PlayStation 2. Okay, it's not even on Steam, so I'm going to have to go look it up elsewhere. <laughs> wow, right out of the gate here. This opening sentence has my attention. It says, we're used to monsters, monsters like Godzilla or King Kong wre wreaking havoc across cities. But what if that monster was a skyscraper-sized bikini model? <laughs> I am in. Luckily, you don't have to imagine, because Demolition Girl gives us just that. In Demolition Girl, an idol named Riho Futaba is doing photo shoots at the beach until she is bitten by a strange creature, making her gigantic. Not Confused just. about what happened, she roams around the city causing mayhem, so it's our job to stop her. I, I don't feel like if I suddenly got huge, I would get disoriented and be like, whoa, <laughs> and just like stepping on insurance agencies. Well, I might step on insurance agencies, but not like accidentally. Wow, the, just destroying buildings. She's a busty bikini clad giant. And she and oh, and in the gameplay, I'm watching a helicopter shoot her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and she's holding her hands out like, no. <laughs> Not my Not boobs. my boobs. Oh, this is it says terrible. in the game you get to pilot various vehicles such as helicopters, tanks and jet fighters to kill the bikini model. Oh, the target is her boobs, too. There's a ring around her chest, and that's you You get more <laughs> points if you hit her in the boobs. This helicopter pilot's just trying to blow her bikini off, I'm pretty sure. What the fuck? Also, zero response. So you're running around in tanks and jets trying to, trying to kill her. However, the game also has side objectives that are pretty unusual, like making you fly around her to take measurements of her body. 
terrible. Oh, gosh. This, the developer of this game has a pillow-shaped fetish. Yeah, he's got a pillow shaped like this, this woman. You know it. Wow. He's also got that fetish. I don't want to call it weird. Don't come after me, but it's weird. Um, there's a fetish online. There's a community of men that really love the idea of like Amazonian women, like massive women. Mm. And they like to feel small. Oh, yeah. And they like the idea of like being up against a pussy, but a pussy is like six foot tall. Like just like standing at the mouth of a cave of a pussy, but it's a pussy. Oh, wait. So they and it's envision like, six foot tall, like ridiculous being little. Oh, weird. And and with this giant woman, that's a fetish. Really? How do they how do yes, they play and, out their fetish? Do they build like models of giant genitalia and stuff? I'll send you some links. Oh gosh. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> uh, the next game it's called Harvester made by DigiFX Interactive released on the PC um, says while it's not the absolute weirdest weirdest Harvester wins the prize for the most disturbing game on this list. Initially released in the 90s, Harvester explores dark and twisted concepts, including murder, cannibalism, and stuff that we can't really mention without our monetization monetization status getting shot into the sun. This is I'm reading from the website. That's not my words. Um, it says its use of gore is also unlike any other game we know today, making it seem so casual that it sends chills down your spine. Blah 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 blah. It was this doesn't sound that interesting. It was made in '96. What's interesting is it's got that it, it um it's got the uh, Mortal Kombat type of uh animation. Yeah, you know how they use real people, and then the and then the yeah motion capture. Yeah, the mocap motion stuff, capture. Uh, or the rotoscoping. Uh, it's got cut scenes of like vi- real video of people, like uh. It's in, it looks it looks wild. It's very interesting. Next one, the LSD Dream Emulator. Whoa, Wanderlust. Released by Outside Directors Company for the PlayStation. The LSD Dream Emulator is an original PlayStation exclusive where you explore surrealistic, surrealistic, dreamlike environments. The game has no story since you only move around and touch object, objects until you get transported to a new dream scenario. Um, and I don't know how realistic this is. This is where Jess comes in. Um <laughs> It already. We'll have to get Jess to play it and and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But uh, it says the game is unsettling because you never know what horrific nightmare you'll encounter. LSD Dream Emulator can throw you into various places from natural environments to sumo wrestling rings to complete acid trip rooms. (laughs) I'm watching the gameplay and it is quite interesting. There's some beautiful environments. And then suddenly it shifts into like an eraser head level, black and white, just nothing but obelisks all over the place. And you're walking through them and, uh, it, but then back to like a bunny, a big geometric bunny in the middle of a place and there's blowing Japanese trees and it's very beautiful. Very wild. That's wild. Huh. This next one I think is probably going to be my favorite. It's called Mr. Mosquito. And I'm just looking at a screen grab and I I, I just need to share this screen grab from Mr. Mosquito. I don't know why this makes me laugh, (laughs) but it's just (laughs) describe what you're seeing. This is just a screen grab from the game. It's a, it's a, 
It's a middle-aged man laying on the ground. He's got a comb over. Uh, he's in his bed. It looks like a bedroom or a living room. He's just sitting there. He's laying on his side with his hand on his head. There's a power meter. Like he's playing, like he's battling something. And there's a picture in picture of a mosquito up above. And, and is this the, this is like a battle scene, <laughs> but he's just laying on his I side watching so. I TV. I think you're a mosquito. And in this level, you're battling a middle-aged gay man <laughs> hanging out in his house. <laughs> Cause he's just laying on the ground watching TV. And, oh, I see. Oh, I forgot. I'm the mosquito. So I've got to try to attack him. Okay, this is so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. In Mr. Mosquito. Oh, the, this the, Mr. Mosquito was released by Zoom for the PlayStation 2, and it's a Japanese game. So, okay. there you go. That, yep. Uh, it says... <laughs> Mr. Mosquito allows you to experience what it's like to be on the other side as a blood sucking critter. If you've ever wondered what being a mosquito is like, this game's got you covered. The game is as exactly as it sounds. You play as a mosquito named Mr. Mosquito. Very creative. And your job is to suck blood out of unsuspecting residents of the Yamada household. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Sounds... It says the game can sometimes trigger battles <laughs> where the residents spot Mr. Mosquito, you. So you'll have to calm the resident down by hitting specific spots like an armored core game with an added chance of malaria. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Bill Gates made it. Oh. Uh... That's All fine. Right. There's uh there's quite a f- bit more here, but there's one in particular that I want to the last one I'm going to talk about. And that one is called Seaman. Seaman. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, this is the only game on this list that I'm familiar with. <laughs> um and it's because it's so weird. Developed by Vivarian for the uh, Sega Dreamcast. I don't even know how to. I, I'm. I literally know about this game, and I have the text in front of me, and I still don't know how to explain it. You're a. <coughs> I'm just gonna read what they write. Yeah. It says virtual pet games are supposed to be cute and relaxing where you can turn off your brain and chill with a virtual furry friend. However, Seaman on the Dreamcast took this formula to a disturbing level. Instead of your usual talking cats or Tamagotchis, Seaman has you care for a fish-like creature with a human face. (laughs) (laughs) However, there's more to it. You can talk to the Seaman. You can talk to the Seaman. Using the Dreamcast microphone. (laughs) And it'll actually respond with some of the strangest dialogue ever put in a video game. It's even possible to have multiple seamen. Seamen, I think is what it would be called. And you can watch your seamen slowly evolve. Oh, oh, and oh, they can become like frog like, like lizard like creatures. It looks like, according to the graphics. But be sure to not forget about them so they don't die. Oh, they, oh, like a Tamagotchi, they can die, huh? Yeah. And <coughs> I know you as the listener can't see what Seaman looks like, but imagine in your head the most disturbing combination of a person and a fish uh put the face let me look at this face put the face oh my god put the face of glenn from the walking dead 
on a trout. Or a carp. Or a carp. Yeah, a carp is even a better, because of the big gills. Or not gills, but the big. Um, uh, what are they called? Uh, the s- scales. Scales, wow. To top it all off, this game is narrated by Leonard Nimoy. No way. Are you kidding? What the heck? Yeah. I'm not kidding. No, yeah. Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Why would he do that? <laughs> it doesn't. Make- and that is semen. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's funny. Well, that's what I brought up. Well, I liked it. That was good. Um, since we've got a whole other, a whole nother show we've got to do, uh, I'm, I'm jumping right in. So, you know, Antarctica, right? I used to live there. (laughs) But. I forgot about jokes on jokes on me. Did you know you cannot go to Antarctica? So, I mean, you couldn't just like go. (laughs) So. I should have really thought about that before building that into my backstory. So, you know, it's, it's so in case people don't know which one it is, Antarctica is the big old chunk of ice at the bottom of the world. Okay. Cause there's two, we got a, yeah. we got one at the top and one at the bottom. Antarctica is the one at the bottom and the one at the top is Santa's house. Okay. Now we got our geography straight. Turns out, Antarctica is way crazier than you'd think. Like, imagine being some sailor dude back in the 1800s, okay? You're just cruising along, minding your own business, when bam, you hit a massive wall of ice. And we're not talking just like like ice cube, you know, like or, or even like a, like a, uh, well, no, what are they called? Oh, why can't I think of words today? The thing that sticks, iceberg. No, it's not even an iceberg. It's a mile high and goes on at least for from where you're sitting forever. It back then you'd be like, well, this must be the end of the world. You know, this is the end. And the ice ice sheets here to protect us from falling off. But here's the thing. The, they, the old timey sailors weren't dumb. They knew the earth was round. So they're thinking, all right, we're just going to, sail around this bad boy and so they did but antarctica is a tough customer it's like looked at the rest of the planet and went nah (laughs) too easy to just be a land mass let's crank it up so it's got wind like no other continent the average wind speed average is 10 knots but it can get up to 96 miles an hour it, and it can go on for, there's nothing stopping it up there. So it, it just decides when it wants to change. It's so cold that 99%, 99.6% of the place is just one giant ice cube. Here's where things get weird. Under all that ice, there's these underground, get this, lakes. And we're not talking about little lakes either. One of them, Lake Vostok, is the sixth largest lake in the world it's just chilling there liquid under almost a mile of ice so how does it stay liquid under a mile of ice well there's this geothermal vent actually on that part of the earth down there that keeps it warm it's like a it's like a hot tub underneath a mile of ice now you'd think nothing could live in a place like that right nope There's these little tiny bacteria that are just living their best life down there. They've been isolated from the rest of the world for like 15 million years. That's longer than humans have been around. They're just, they're still living down there though. There's, there's, there's bacteria that are living that a mile under the ice in a geothermal lake. It gets even, have we not learned Anything from science fiction? Probably not. 
Have you never seen the thing? Oh, yeah. Right? Like, and we're bringing this stuff up. We're like, oh, look at this. Here, pass it around. Lick it. See what it, you know, see what it does under a microscope. We should probably leave million-year-old bacteria alone. You'd think, right? Yeah, we're finding out all kinds of things in Antarctica, though. It gets even weirder. There's this place in Antarctica called the Makurdo Dry Valleys that literally looks like Mars. And in this Mars-looking place, there's a glacier that's, get this, bleeding. Not, not even kidding you. It's called Blood Falls, and it looks like it sounds. For years, people are like, what in the world is going on there? Turns out it's just super iron-rich water that rusts when it hits the air. But still, it's a bleeding glacier. It's literally a glacier bleeding red. It's a bright red, blood-looking glacier. It's frightening. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a picture of you pulled a picture of it up. Yeah, just look up if you want to if you want to look it up. Look up Mercurdo, M C M U R D O Dry Valleys, and look up the Blood Falls. Oh, so weird. Imagine, so imagine it's even five hundred years ago, but let's go a thousand years ago. And you don't know shit about uh, rusty water, right? And you believe that the earth is fucking flat. And um, in order to disprove whether or not somebody is a witch, you just throw them in the water. <laughs> yeah. And if they sink, they're innocent. <laughs> and if they float, they're guilty and they've got to die anyway. You don't know a lot of things. <laughs> And you come across a blood river. Unbelievable. Yeah. Y- you would you would think, well, there must this must be the outpouring from hell. Like there's bodies on the inside that are getting smashed. Like you would you would put it into spiritual, like maybe some religious connotation as to how in the world the earth is bleeding like this. Oh uh, man. And it really does look like blood. That's amazing. It's bright red, bright red. It's crazy. So here's another thing. You might have heard of this one. It gets brought up by, you know, climate change in climate change conversations all the time. But the, the Ross Ice Shelf is another thing in Antarctica. This, so this thing's massive. It's an ice shelf the size of France. But that's not the creepy part. The creepy part is it. Get this, the ice shelf sings. It makes these low, eerie tones that sound like something out of a sci-fi flick. Scientists say it's just the wind vibrating the snow dunes, but it's still making noise. It's so weird. It gets weirder. In the late 1950s, scientists found a spot in Antarctica where gravity just, get this, works differently (laughs) they call it a gravity anomaly but it's just a fancy way of saying we have no idea what's going on here it turns out it might be because of a massive impact crater hidden under the ice but we'd be talking the size twice the size of one that took out the dinosaurs that's how big the space rock is that they think is causing a gravity anomaly (laughs) Like, if there's one constant on Earth, it would be, I've never... Hold on a minute. (laughs) Hold hold on a minute. If we know, you say twice the size of the the meteor that took out, the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs. Chicks Club one, yeah. If we know about that, because it wiped out almost all life on Earth... Like, why don't we know about this one historically? Right? Because I think I I would wager that this one impacted the Earth in such a pre 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 history. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, prior to yeah. even like complex organisms, right. And so existing. Yeah, on. we okay. have no okay. mass extinction event that we could tie it to or anything that would make it interesting for fourth graders. So that's why we never learned it. Um, but. 
can you can you think of a time ever where you've been just wan, you know, anywhere you've ever been in your whole life where you've been like, what? Whoa, whoa. Gravity feels weird right here. Right, guys? Like gravity feels a little weird right here. Like that's not a thing. It's not a thing. That's not a thing. But apparently here, gravity responds differently. Get this. In 2017, a hole. I don't even know if you can call this a hole when it's this big, but there's a hole the size of Ireland <laughs> that just opened up in the ice in Antarctica. Not a little hole, not a medium-sized hole, a hole of the size to fit an entire country. See, scientists are scratching their heads trying to figure out how something like that big happens over a period of time and appears out of nowhere. Then there's the mystery of the abandoned lifeboat. In 1964, some British Navy guy found his lifeboat just chilling in a lagoon on this remote island. In a lagoon. No people, no markings, just a boat. Two years later, another group goes on the, uh, goes to the same spot and poof, the boat's gone. It's like the start of every ghost ship story ever told. Hold on a minute. So this guy, I'm confused about this. Okay. So he... 1964. He found... So he's in Antarctica, walking along the ice, finds a lagoon, okay. and there's a lifeboat in the lagoon, just chilling there, just hanging out. No, no life, no, no life in the lifeboat. No signs of any, any, anything. And then years later... That happened in 64, and years later, another group goes to the same spot, and the lifeboat's gone. Oh, that pisses me off. Lifeboat theft, right? It's just, no, it pisses me off because I'm never going to know. Like, why was the lifeboat where? there? Also, why and where? Where the fuck did it go? Well, and, and how did it I get I wish there? you hadn't brought that story. Here, let me let me because tell you this. Because we're never going to get a conclusion. A lifeboat, when compact, is not a light thing either. So somebody would have had to like trudge. That's a like, lot of work. They, yeah, if they placed it in there, if it wasn't placed in there, imagine. Like I can't imagine the journey, the the, the thought that somebody out on the ocean, ocean, were in a lifeboat. Something happened to them. This lifeboat gets blown to some shore that's not a mile high in the Antarctic and then blown onto the the surface. I could see it where like that thing just skidding around like a Star Wars vehicle choo, 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 in, you know, 96 mile an hour winds until it hits the water. And then it's kind of just stuck there. But then it leaves. <laughs> OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the leaving that pisses me off. Right. It's like where. Where did you go, Wilson? Okay. Um, let's see. I got just a couple more things. Boat's gone. Um, the Nazis, they show up. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Some folks think that there's a secret. The main character in Minecraft. <laughs> Some folks think there's a secret Nazi base down there where Hitler escaped to after World War II, and they're not just hiding out. They're supposedly shooting down planes with UFOs, because why not? It's, it sounds like a bit of a stretch, but speaking of aliens, there are people who swore up and down that Antarctica is basically an alien parking lot. There's a bunch of weird lights in the sky. There's odd, there's odd pyramid shaped mountains, which you can find, you can find that you can find pictures of pyramids in Antarctica, maybe ancient alien civilizations. You don't even need the mountains to, to, to kind of think. Another thing is this is when our government itself is not exactly like very forthcoming with the people and we have area 51 right in our to backyard. Say the least. <laughs> to say the least, yeah. <coughs> his 
He's never been sharper. A- area with 51's in our backyard. <laughs> and and uh, so there is no cognitive decline. <clears throat> imagine if they, imagine if, if the government is like, well, no one's going to Antarctica. So let's build some bases down there and stuff. I mean, there we don't know what's going on down there. Scientists are down there doing some pretty cool stuff, though. They found life that in that underground lake that I mentioned. It's not octopuses or anything like that, but, you know, microbes and bacteria, that's still pretty amazing, especially since they've been isolated, just eating and living for millions of years. They're also studying things like the ozone hole, ancient DNA, and even particles. It feels dirty. Yeah. There's a particle receptor that's down in Antarctica that sits up way, 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 way underneath the ice. And this, this uh, facility detects quarks, which are so small that they can pass through a major portion of the earth. That's how small they are. And they're moving so fast. So they put they they embed this this facility way down under the ice, and the reason they do this is the corks slow down just enough through the the thick the depth of the ice that they can pick up the the trail of a quark moving through through the earth. This is a weird place. Like I never want to go there. I I it's the stuff of nightmares. That's what I brought. Do you ever want, like, I would like to go out into a, like an ice shelf in Antarctica that's, you know, however, hundreds and hundreds of meters thick that, and and you know, in that ice, there's probably millions of years of history because of how long it's been there. Why haven't we as 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 humans went out there and just melted it like to all the way to the ground to, to like until you reach Earth? Until you reach some solid something. Some solid like yeah. pick a pick a fucking thirty foot by thirty foot section and then just melt it. Down to the, do you know the shit you would find? Probably. Because it's so much easier to do that than dig, right? You can have sump pumps pumping out the, pumping out the, uh, the water into the ocean or whatever. And the shit you would find, the corpses of ancient things and creatures. And then by the time you do get to ground, what you could then learn about I, I think about that. I do too. I, I, that comes. You know, it's wild is you wouldn't even need to go to Antarctica to do it. Um, there 11,500 years ago was the end of an ice age. And so if you were hanging out in Northern Idaho or Wyoming and you, you were at a certain spot, you'd literally be looking up at a mile tall ice sheet. 11,500 years ago. Oh, it's that thick? Yeah. Uh, this ice sheet, it's called the Laurentide Ice Sheet. And it, it it covered all of Alaska, Canada, and came down that far into the U.S. So Michigan Michigan and Illinois are almost completely consumed by it. Uh, all the Great Lakes were disappeared under this ice sheet. And if you were standing next to it, it'd be a, it's a mile tall. And then, and then Earth, where you're standing. And, um, okay. But like the average, like an ice shelf in Antarctica, like how far do you go down until you hit earth? Uh, I, and I know it's, that's I, a it good question. Rock, Let's see probably, here. but is there earth, just the amount of history that you would uncover. If you just picked a 20 or 30 foot by 20 or 30 foot section and went down and just melted it. And on top of that, you don't even have to be careful with it the way you have to excavate like dinosaur bones and dirt because it just melts. Yeah. It does all the work for you. It, I don't know why Jess is so fucking entertained by me seemingly getting angry about this for no reason whatsoever. No, oh, you're right. I, I just looked into it. So yes, there is earth beneath Antarctica. 
The continent of Antarctica is covered by a thick ice sheet, as we know, but beneath the ice is ice is solid land, including mountains, valleys, plains. The landmass of Antarctica is composed of various types of rock, much like other continents, and its mountain ranges, including the Trans Trans Antarctic Mountains, which divides East Antarctica and West Antarctica. And those mountains come up; they come up over the. But in some cases, there's the ice is over two miles thick. Two miles. Imagine what you would uncover. Yeah. They found the underlying earth, though, by using radar, some satellite imaging, and drilling. So they have gotten to it. Okay. I, want, I don't appreciate Jess. Why is she laughing so much? I'm not <laughs> because of how fucking stupid I sound. <laughs> That's why she's laughing. <laughs> I think it's a good question. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, like, we don't, we don't know. Much about the Younger Dryas period, which was eleven ended eleven thousand five hundred years ago, which m people were around on the Earth during that. We know that people crossed the land bridge and came down into the U.S. and all over the place before that. And uh, but what happens when you have a giant one mile tall ice shelf and then it melts? You get. Okay, I hear you, but like in terms of like the size of the, so my idea is you pick a thirty. Hear me out. Okay, okay. I want to explain my idea so that it doesn't sound as stupid as it inevitably is. You pick a thirty by thirty foot section of the ice shelf, right? Where we know there's millions of years of history in the ice and it's however many thousand foot thick, whatever. And we have the technology. You melt that down and you have sump pumps pumping that water into the yeah. ocean. That's still not enough water that you're pumping into the ocean to cause no. like rising tides or anything. even if it's 4,000 foot deep and you're, no, it the wouldn't. ocean is huge. What I'm saying is the the heat and melting. Why is Jess still I laughing don't know. at this? I don't know this why. This is a smart idea. I agree. <laughs> the heat does all the work for you. You don't have to have little brushes and trying to like, you just pick up shit as it comes into view while the ice is melting. Look, there's a fucking corpse of a caveman. That's pretty cool. There's a goddamn snuffleupagus. <laughs> From 2000 BC. <laughs> well, that's pretty fucking cool. I think cool. you're right. The way you do it, the way you're planning to do it is is more less destructive than like a core sampler, which basically you could be cutting through Snuffleupagus. You'd only get part of it. But I agree with you. I, I'm not talking about a fucking core sample up. I'm talking about getting the whole corpse yeah. intact without having to do any work and you just pump the water right. out. I, I don't know why. I, maybe they are. Maybe they are doing it. Maybe it freezes. And then too you fast. get to the ground, and that's a whole other different story. Yeah. Now you've just unearthed ground that hasn't been seen in fucking 10 billion years. And then you can start doing core samples there at the earth. What you know what? That's this is smart. It's smart. Okay, god damn it. This is a good idea. I think it'd be a cool movie. Like imagine a 200 foot wide hole where we used massive heat. Boop, 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 boop. To get down all the way, and then then the, the we send people down there. That'd be pretty cool. I'm with you. And the things you would find. You, Stop it, Jess. I don't know how long it's been covered in ice. Is my only question. So I don't know what you would find. Um, like you know, were there was it icy? Was there still ice there during the dinosaurs or maybe there? Uh, well, I do know in Siberia, they come across giant things all the time in the ice. You know, th they found mammoths that were actually up. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. And flash frozen too. In Siberia, they found a mammoth. Get this. Flash frozen so quickly that it still had food in its mouth and in its throat. It was like mid. Yeah, mid it would gulp. all be great. It would be like in great condition, yeah, totally preserved. Everything you find, yeah, totally. Well, you, Jess, 
<laughs> uh, well, we got another episode to do, so let's close this one out. I love her, but God damn, she pisses me <laughs> off. <laughs> Maybe you need to just create a PowerPoint presenting your idea, and then she'll get on board. Oh, I see. She said all that stuff just shooting out the drain pump into the ocean. That's why you have people watching, Jess, so that it doesn't get caught up in the sump pumps. You have people standing guard being like, oh, I see a forehead coming into view there. <laughs> uh, this is a good idea. It's a great idea. I like it. All right. Well, that's all we got for this episode. Join us in two seconds for another one. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> soup, soup, everybody. <laughs>